The committee has chosen, as it has done previously, to reject the ordinance unanimously. Now that I have seen the lack of sincerity, the lack of good faith, it is my firm intention to submit this ordinance for reconsideration as soon as the rules of this council will allow, and then to resubmit it until you, gentlemen, acknowledge the existence of discrimination and face squarely the need for legislative action by this honorable body. Nineteen sixty eight, the Fair Housing Law is passed in Wisconsin after two hundred days of marching and a decade of fighting. The passage of this law brought about change that was needed in Wisconsin, change that would allow African Americans to live in the neighborhood or community of their choosing. One young lady, Val Phillips, worked throughout Wisconsin to gain that freedom. Due to Val Phillips' willingness to take a stand for civil rights, including fair housing, she not only broke barriers for African Americans but for women as well. After receiving her undergraduate degree from Howard University, Val, a native of Milwaukee, moved home to Wisconsin to attend UW-Madison Law School. While back in Wisconsin, she met her husband, Dale Phillips, and continued law school with her soon-to-be husband by her side. She was the first African-American woman to graduate from UW-Madison Law School. From there, she and her husband moved into Badger Village Housing. Badger Village was a dormitory-style housing complex for graduated couples to live after or during college. While at Badger Village, Dale and Val were the only African-American couple and experienced many segregation issues, some of which included the other white ladies not willing to use the same bathroom as Val. Eventually, the other residents got a petition going to remove Dale and Val from the complex. Driven by the appalling treatment that she experienced from her own peers, Val discovered a new passion that would lead her down a crucial path. She knew something needed to be done, and soon. Listen, I just didn't see why uh, I should not be able to live anywhere in the city that I could afford to live. After living in Badger Village, Dale and Val returned to Milwaukee to open their law office called Phillips and Phillips. Not only did Val manage her law office, but she also played a role in her community by joining the League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters attempted to register women to vote throughout Milwaukee. At the time, Milwaukee was divided by race. The African-American community lived on the north side, also known as the inner core of Milwaukee, while the white community lived on the south side. As Phillips traveled to the inner core, she discovered a less than adequate living environment. It was cold, it was unsafe, and it was falling apart. Something had to be done. Belle Phillips joined the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, in order to protest for the rights of African-Americans in Milwaukee. The NAACP protested against all discrimination veered towards African Americans. Then, in 1956, a new voting district, named the Second Ward, was created in order to account for the rising population of African Americans. With a new ward being added, there would have to be a new alderman to represent the district. This alderman could be black. After long consideration of her family, reputation, and her job, Val decided to run for Alderman of the Second Ward in the coming election. This campaign would be very difficult, not only because she was African American, but because Val was a woman. In order to win the election, Val and her campaign group decided that her race and gender would be kept secret. This means that in any posters, business cards, and flyers, there would be no picture, only her name, Val Phillips. That strategy worked. Val was elected to serve the Second Ward. Since all of the other members on the Milwaukee Common Council were white men, nobody was willing to share an office with her. Just put me by myself. If they don't want to be with me, I sure in hell don't want to be with them. Despite the election for the Milwaukee Common Council as the first woman and the first African American, it was clear that her colleagues wanted nothing to do with her. Week after week, month after month, year after year, to ignore not just the requests of the black community, but of the entire Milwaukee community. Despite the fact that Val Phillips was of the minority in her career, that didn't stop her from taking a stand by introducing new laws and fighting for what she believed in. The fact that Val was an African American wasn't the only thing that slowed her down. It was the fact that she was a woman working in politics, and she was willing to do anything to break that cultural norm. 
They do forget that I'm a black person, but they never forget that I'm a woman. In 1962, Fell first introduced the Fair Housing Law to the Milwaukee Common Council. The Fair Housing Law was a law to prohibit landlords from turning down African Americans from renting. When the law was introduced, it was voted 18 to 1, having only Val support the act. While Val Phillips fought for the Fair Housing Law in her place of work, she wasn't the only one fighting in her district or Milwaukee. Father James Grappi, a priest assigned to work at a parish in the Inner Core, had also been noticing complaints about the lack of white landlords allowing rent to African American applicants. He quickly became greatly involved in civil rights within Milwaukee, joining the NAACP. Together, both Val Phillips and Father James Grappi decided to take action. In 1967, Val Phillips and Father James Grappi led a group across the 16th Viaduct into white neighborhoods. As the marchers steadily crossed the bridge, white protesters waited impatiently with raw eggs and crude white supremacy signs. No matter the amount of feces, raw eggs, and crude language that were thrown at Val Phillips and her marchers, they continued to peacefully march for 200 more days. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, it was expected for women to clean their houses, take care of the kids, and make warm meals for their husbands after a long day of work. Growing up, her mother subscribed to these norms. My mother was not for it, marching. You know, she said, it's not ladylike to be running up the street shouting and hollering, you know. I said, no, Mom, we're not doing that. We're, we're singing, uh, singing freedom songs. She still didn't approve. By taking a stand for fair housing, Val Phillips broke cultural norms for women, proving that they can do more than just be ladylike. On April 4, 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. It was time, time to bring the whole country together to end all violence against those who were fighting for their rights. April 1968, the Fair Housing Act was passed nationally, barring anyone from discriminating potential renters based on their race, gender, national origin, or religion. That same year, the Fair Housing Act was finally passed in Wisconsin. Fell Phillips' fight had made a difference. From there, Fell didn't stop pursuing her dreams. She went on to become the first African-American judge on the Wisconsin judiciary and became the first woman and African-American Secretary of State in 1978, which gave her the title of being the first African-American woman to be elected to a statewide position in the United States. While working as Secretary of State, Val continued her work as an African-American and women's rights activist. Because of Val's achievements, people throughout Milwaukee asked Val to speak at events. With each event, the organizers would pay her for her work. She charged an extra amount than expected for these events in order to have enough money to contribute to African-American businesses and churches throughout Milwaukee. This practice was misunderstood as greed and derailed a future run for governor. Despite this setback, she still worked for what she believed in to make an impact on African Americans throughout Milwaukee. By helping African American churches and businesses, she broke barriers for women as well by taking matters into her own hands while managing a leadership position. Throughout her entire life, Val Phillips broke barriers for women and African Americans by taking a stand for civil rights. Her persistence in passing the Fair Housing Act opened up many doors throughout Wisconsin for those in the minority. Val's legacy and empowerment will carry on in her achievements through her many first in politics and civil rights activism. She took a stand for women by carving a path that will be remembered by the footprints she left for girls and women in the city, state, and throughout the country. <laughs>